Oh, oh, like, uh, uh, what inspired uh, you to paint nah, this painting? Come on. Um, come on. Uh, Raisin Bran. When did you paint it? <laughs> yeah, I've been. It's uh, this painting started about three years ago, and went through several transitions. The latest transition, uh, I think, was about uh, six weeks or two months ago, where I reworked the middle ground space and some of the trees to create the illusion of depth along the middle ground space in here. Uh huh. That tended to illuminate a little bit more the, the reflective quality of the water in the foreground space, and it kind of allowed you to see a, a little more of a depth type feel under these trees so it goes back in space because the darks tend to recede. The opposite thing is this sort of stage lighting effect with the, with the light coming from behind those. So there's a lot of variety of form in this. Flat form, round form, horizontal planes, vertical planes, and of course my favorite, the power lines from Connecticut Light and Power. That had to be in, you know. I didn't even notice that initially. That's a power line. That's the Burr Pond power <laughs> line. Nice. And it's a reflection. Oh, yeah. I suppose. But these are, you know, it all, it, it becomes um, tied in just because of how it mimics, like, uh, forms with uh, 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 tree branches, and that's really not different, but it is a, a, one of those iconic elements, like, I suppose. And, um, you know, that kind of uh, um, surface, yeah. but it's c because this is very opaque. The, I mean, my, I paint, I push paint around. It's not like I'm trying to get this effect through, like, wash of color or generalities or anything. I get uh -huh. very particular about line and uh, and edge against edge color, uh -huh. so it's opaque and it has a surface, but yet it feels transparent. It is the is it, the it does quest. have a certain the, movement the surf, and three dimensionality yeah. to yeah, it. Yeah, that's that I want, and also I want these abstract elements to be in that as well. And it's a modernist idea about landscape, there's no question about. It. And and it's a. Um, a reflective color quality. It's not a traditional space. You know, it's not about lights and darks and, you know, the, the uh, uh, dark value type paintings with a lot of light. This is more about warm and cool relationships, which is post-impressionist as a historical reference. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Well, you know, the the water certainly has a kind of cooling. Yeah. But the la landscape, you feel like there's some sunlight. Yeah. On the yeah. um, there's some sunlight yeah. there, which yeah. does have a little more warmth because yeah. there's yeah. some yellows, and mm -hmm. you really feel some sunlight. Yeah, and that's that differentiates um, round from flat as well. The way the light comes through in here, and you start feeling the sense of roundness as opposed to these flatter, more, um, uh, more foreground shapes. But, you know, in the end, even having said that, a lot of it is just about contrast. Very dark darks and very light lights. And if you look at any of the history of painting, like in the, uh, in the Louvre, and, and you could think of a number of French painters anyway, that was 90% of what they were about. Even with all the color in the world, it's still 90% contrast. It, it's really quite a simple concept, but the, the complex forms that come about uh, uh, makes that, you know, sustaining. You know, it's not just a, a, a depiction and, right. you know, there's right. more, there's a lot of sort of mystery, mystery type feel, you know, you, you sort of look at it and then you see something different. You know, yes, that, exactly. It's more complex, yeah, as you they, said. Yeah, so it, it's, that's why, you know, I like this, uh, and, and it's, it's um, quite a, quite a journey uh, sometimes, these things. Uh -huh. And it echoes this, you know, it's meant oh. to sort of, I think, but this came first. Uh-huh. That was one of the last things that was developed, and that what actually, that space I think has more significance even than the bottom. But see. you see, whenever these things come about, it's through a constant correction.
process. There's no, you know, you're not, you don't know what this thing's going to end up looking like. And it becomes a, a search that it's sort of like a novelist writes a book without knowing the plot. Right. And that's what that keeps you interested in, in the, that kind of stability in the construction, if it comes together. Right. So, and it, sometimes they don't come together. I actually, yeah, they do, eventually. Eventually, they, I have a, I, I, I use, I'm pretty tenacious about it. I don't let them go. That's, they, I, I invest a lot of time in these things, so I, I better have something come about, something real about it. One relationship is all you really need. I mean, it's, a, it's better to have two, perhaps, but I think this has actually more than two, even, maybe, maybe even three. Just the design, the thing, element, the, uh, the, the, the kind of the palette, the full spectrum of color. Why does it take, like, you know, like we've been watching this now for about uh, five, 10 minutes? Yeah. Hi. Now, this was painted in, a, in the studio. This, uh, so the, the, it's got a density to it, you know. I don't know about lighting this uh, particularly. I, I actually think it reflects pretty well. I'm not sure you're going to need to put any kind of artificial light uh, on it because you do have light coming through, uh, and um, the you know the outside light coming into the house. So, it, but at night it might you know it's going to look different you know. Yeah. But I I also have um, these um, tungsten lights that I oh, use. Don't worry about whatever. In the well, there's one. The, um, oh, the, my, the, these tungsten lights that actually mimic sunlight in, in a certain way. You know, I'm able to see color, so I do paint with tungsten lights. But um, it's, uh, that's something that you can also do uh, at a certain point. If you, want, if you need a lamp, they make these things that are really kind of cool there. The other dimension to some painting is the is surface. This yeah. has, you know, this is a, uh, a surface that's very tangible and you see the, you know, the, the, the buildup of paint. So it's a, it's a way different effect on the eye too. And that actually affects the movement of the eye throughout the picture as well. Absolutely. It, it makes it much more alive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, much it, it more starts alive. to yeah. And now the 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 one thing that can happen though, I mean, this painting's not about that, but some guys you depend a lot on building up surface. It starts to become too much. This is not about surface. This is a an intuitive uh, approach to um, understanding a, a so-called trueness for, of this motif through through my you know my my. Uh, paint, uh, you know, immediate sort of decision-making process, but um, uh, it, it, it tends to build anyway, you know, and so there is that component in this picture. And I think my pictures are getting more and more about surface, too, because I'm, I'm starting to really understand what makes things come about through reflective color as opposed to light and dark, and that took years, 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 years. Post-impressionist. That was the language. That guy yeah. changed the world that way. He changed the way we see, basically. And it was one guy. Then we've been trying to figure it out ever since. It, here's how I look at it. It's not about the object. It's about the context of the object. Hmm. Without the context, you you can have. Uh, a, a singular shape, but there's a relationship there that exists within the environment hmm. of that object that actually uh, determines the object to me. So the reflection is just a. It's a yeah. It's a. It's, it's just a, a way to achieve that. Yeah, it's completeness. A, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a total realization. See, yeah. Which is mm -hmm. all very interconnected. There's not not really a priority over a shape. Mm -hmm. over space per se. That space pushes forward almost as much spatially mm -hmm. as the objects. It's very tight that way. But you still feel the sense of it's plastic. There's a plasticity to that. You know, it's a, it's a mm -hmm. metaphor. Mm -hmm. a metaphor. So it, it, there are these abstract elements that I think make it more than the sum mm -hmm. of the parts that way. And it's, 
you know, self-interest of, uh, of the artist as well. Uh, without that, um, there would, I, I, th I think there would be something missing too, you know. So it's all different ways to mm -hmm. interpret this, but, but it, it basically is only as good as the context, which is why we say in tennis, you're only as good as your second serve. It's the same thing, it's parallel, parallel universe. You know. I mean, I, I'm just like staring at the painting now and, and looking at how, for example, like you look at an object up there yeah. and then when you start looking at its reflection, it sort of completes that object. Sort yeah, of. in a way. Uh, I do a lot of that yeah. with, with reflections in that it's, it tends to become sort of a mirror type feel. Yeah. It's not even like, you know, I get pretty, um, I don't know, uh, I, I, maybe obsessed is the but. I, I want to mimic the, and I like the idea of symmetry without it being symmetrical, but it feels symmetrical. The problem with reflections is, is that I'm an opaque, you know, painter. I'm, I'm like, you know, pushing this stuff around. To create the feeling of reflection through opaque paint, I think, is an issue with, in modernism in modernism and I'm sort of like breaking ground I think in a way because a lot of times when you see a lake scene it's a very traditional space and very traditional sort of wash of transparency you know and that sort of thing but it's kind of thin you know this is very direct and uh, and the, 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 the reflective quality of, of color using white for example as, as a hue as opposed to black creates that feeling of haze and distance, as well as um, uh, uh, sort of that, that pastel hue, which is pretty, you know, interesting stuff. Uh, Picasso did that, you know, after about 20, 30 years of painting, he started to get into that, that notion of, of flat form and reflective color. But, and, but this is a lot more, I guess, um, graphic. I'm more graphic that way, but I also want the abstraction at the same time. That, that controversial in, a, in and of itself, I mean, the painting is the painting, and that either uh, people relate to this, it's not a mass audience that I relate to, it's a select, I, I feel like there's a, a sort of an art aficionado or an art educated public, it, it's not a big, big base, uh, that way, the, the 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 tourists that go to the modern are are you know they're there to see performance art and this sort of theater. This is a very active thing, you know. Looking at paint, nothing's holding you there, you know. You have to do the looking. It's not like a movie where it's passively moving in front of you. This you have to look at. So it's a lot more active that way. It's not for everyone. But um, I suppose the critics, they, they've been respectful of my work in the past. I think they, they, they too feel a complexity and a, and a form and very individualized. The problem is, is that um, the, 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 the art stars are out there um, dealing with uh, sociological uh, uh, venues as opposed to painting issues. Painting is painting. It doesn't relate to anything else. It's it's a world in and of itself. Period. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of a lot of art comes out of dirt. Yep. Um, anyway, thank you. Uh, well, I'm, this I'm, is our I'm artist. I'm honored. Tell you the truth, Robert Jessel. I'm honored. And we're just thank thrilled you. to have his painting here. Yeah. On loan from the Metropolitan Museum. Yeah.